Shetani ni zile zile na kuambia network eh? Shetani ni zile zile <laughs> So just to conclude which is what I was doing sorry about that we got interrupted the network decided to bring trouble here yeah, I've been thinking that it's a fairy comb that uh, gives me grief So learn to let go of your heart learn to expect nothing and then learn to look out and especially for people who are not letting go of their heart before the Lord those are dangerous dangerous people Um and it's okay to love them from a distance it's okay to not expect anything other is they turn around and they hurt and they hurt you viciously they hurt you viciously whenever the lord reveals to you that somebody's gone through some crazy things or some really some things that are beyond the expected then that's that's the kind of person who if they won't talk about it if they won't um you know you don't see them spending time in prayer talking about how god's working on them or you know um even acknowledging that um things happen to people in their lives if they're in total denial often that's a very 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 dangerous person and it's good to guard your heart because the word of god says guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life so um but for those that are listening and you're thinking about things to do with her it's good to work allow god to work on your heart but also the other thing is sometimes you can have siblings you can have even parents or a spouse who is hurting going through stuff but they pretend that everything is okay it's important to learn how to handle that so that they don't end up um destroying you based on their hurt that they have refused to let go of and um for some reason people who are hurting are always looking um if they don't allow the lord to deal with it a hurting person is always looking to hurt there's something about hurt that um thinks it will feel better if it hurts another and you kind of want another person to hurt so that you can feel like you have company or i don't know um you know someone shared with me a few people have shared with me that have shared with um about grief and when they lose somebody and they say that it seems like the world stops and when a really bad thing happens to you that's what happens it feels like the world stops and sometimes some people will let the world stop but others will try to stop the world so that they can go through whatever it is um they're going through with other people and instead of asking for help for some reason a lot of people who've been hurt very deeply will not ask for help they'll just lash out they'll just hurt others and they're continuously looking to hurt so very often if you find somebody who's hurtful who's mean who seems insensitive very often in there you will find hurt um let's learn to pray for those who are hurting let's learn to stand with those who are hurting but in that process learn to ask god to protect you to protect your heart to other is you will be i mean to protect your heart other is that hurt that's coming from somebody will come and jump on you and try to bring destruction but basically what am i saying if you are hurting it's very important to seek the lord cast your cares unto jesus spend time at the feet of jesus and giving him your heart giving him your 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 pain giving him your disappointment including in the past I often spend time at the feet of Jesus just asking him to search my heart and I'll find something from way back in nursery school way back in primary school something I didn't even remember something I'd forgotten and I've learned to surrender it to God because if I don't I'm going to hurt somebody because what happens is you're going to meet someone who reminds you of the person who hurt you or somebody will say something and you will remember the person who did something to you at the same time there are people who walk around and you remind them of somebody else who hurt them who did something to them you know you find men who are angry with women because of their mothers and what their mothers did so maybe you're working you're the boss and this guy is just giving you a really really hard time chances are he has a wound that came from the mom so they have a mother wound you can i mean if 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 you're the woman who's in authority and if you don't ask god how to help you to know how to help them then they'll just give you a really hard time and the worst thing is you'll mostly end up firing this person and what they needed to do was not to be fired because they were a perfectly good worker but they were going through something so it just needs to be addressed are you seeing how hard works it's just horrible it's such a trap it's such a trap yeah Susan thanks for confirming you've been praying about this yeah or you find you have a father wound um and so you find that maybe your boss reminds you of your dad or your boss reminds you of your uncle who groped you or did something or stepmother or whatever or whoever it is an authority figure who really did crazy things to you and you're hurting and instead of letting 
uh, the Lord deal with that, you find yourself getting into trouble with authority. A lot of children, if you're a teacher, a lot of children who will rebel against authority are hurting and they're going through something and the way they express themselves is through rebelling against authority. They're trying to prove you cannot box me in again because somebody boxed them in before. You cannot lock me up again because somebody locked them in before. So before as teachers or people in authority Sunday school teachers, uh, maybe bosses or as employees, before you deal with the issue of behavior that you're seeing, it's important to address, could it be that there is an issue of hurt that is deep down inside? So that for us as believers, we do not go to be the reason why people get even more hurt when they have been hurt. We should be, you know, we are the extensions of the hands of Jesus Christ. We are the body. We are the body. He's the head. So if we are his body, then we should be able to bring healing because his body brings healing. Uh, his body was broken um, for the sake of those who are unwell, for the sake of those who are lost, all of us really, pretty much. So that's how we address the issues of hurt. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. But also... Please don't take past hurt as a harmless thing. It has a way of packing and then at the right moment, right, not right, eh? quotes, eh? at the right moment, which is really the wrong moment, it just comes in jumps. A lot of people are struggling in marriages because of past hurt that you have not addressed. I know a woman who um, pushed and pushed her husband's buttons until the guy hit her. And I know you can't make that excuse and say that the person pushed the buttons until they were hit because no one should hit you but. This lady, the mother, used to be beaten by the dad. And as she grew up, when she got married, when her husband would get angry, she said, you want to hit me? I know you want to hit me. And she would push the guy and push the guy around. Hit me, hit me, hit me. I know you want to hit me. Hit me, hit me. And what's happening is that you actually realize that this is the little girl watching her mother being beaten and just saying, I know my marriage is just going to be just like my mother's marriage because my dad was a horrible person. And that is hurt that has not been dealt with. And in your own marriage, marriage, you actually push your spouse to the point where you are actually hit. And then you start saying, yeah, I knew you were going to hit me. And then, of course, she's no longer married, but she can also not listen. And unfortunately, there are people who are, and they're born again. They're just trapped in a corner, trapped in a hole, trapped in a thing. And no matter how much you try to help them, they have destructive behavior as a result of their hurt. And somehow hurt is always looking for hurt. Hurt keeps attracting hurt. Hurt makes a way for other hurt. And that's how it is. The same thing that they say an abuser becomes, the abuse becomes an abuser as well. It's the craziest thing, but it's true. Somebody who's been abused, say sexually abused, very often, unless the Lord intervenes, unless the Lord brings healing, unless they are delivered, very often they turn around and become abusers. Typically, whenever I'm doing counseling for a couple, if I find that somebody in the marriage hits, whether the man or the woman, I always revisit their background. And there's not a single case I've ever dealt with where I did not find that if it's the lady who was hitting her mother used to hit the father or used to hit them if it's the gentleman who's hitting okay i guess not a gentleman because he's hitting so he's not a gentleman for sure if it's the husband who's hitting his father used to hit the mother and it just goes the same way over and over and over and that's the other thing for us as women we need to know is it better to be married and claiming that it's for the sake of your children when what you're actually doing is exposing your children to hurt and destroying them? I've come to learn that though the Lord hates divorce, the Lord would never let you stay in a situation where you're being abused and your children are being abused in the name of staying with your children. Sometimes parents are better off being separate and being happy so that the children have two functional parents even if the parents are not together. So those are some of the things that we must pray about that we must seek the lord about and if there's a situation of hitting in marriage there is no persevering and pressing in and praying and fasting in the case of hitting there is only or even emotional abuse there is only one solution the couple needs to be separated and then in that separated way you agree on the terms of separation which will include counseling and getting help for your marriage to find out what is wrong and why is it resulting in heating and in abuse. And then while that is being resolved, then you can get back together. Otherwise, if you stay together, there's a chance that the children will also be damaged and affected. Sometimes, by the way, separation is not a bad thing. If you ask the Lord, not divorce, 
No divorce and sometimes separation when done correctly will actually spare your marriage, bring healing to your marriage and bring healing to your home. And if your boyfriend or girlfriend hits you or is abusive, it's not going to change when you're married. Do not marry an abusive person. They need to deal with their hurt. They need to address their hurt. They need to address the reason. And a lot of us have this thing, especially for the women. We think that you'll marry him and then you'll help him. There is no such thing. There are things called infirmities. Those are deep wounds that only God can heal. You can only pray for somebody, stand with them, love them, but you can't be the punching bag. You can't be the one who's always being told that you're useless. You can't be the one who's always told that you're ugly. You can't be the one who's always told that nothing good will ever come from you and all that stuff. For as long as you continue to allow it, not only does it damage you, but it damages the little ones as well, but it also does not help the abuser because then the abuser also continues to use you as a crutch giving excuses so it's very very important that we get help it's very important that heart be taken care of that heart be addressed in the presence of god because it always leads to bigger issues and if not addressed heart breeds heart and then heart because remember the law of sowing and reaping isn't it if you sow hurt you will reap hurt If you sow joy or love, you will reap joy or love. So you give and it comes back to you. A good measure shaken down, uh, pressed pressed together and running over is poured into your lap. The measure you use is measured to you. So you measure out hurt, you speak out hurt, and it comes right back to you. So that's a message that I felt the Holy Spirit giving me. And it's important for us to even, and by the way, hurt will keep you from enjoying the love of God the Father. You cannot believe that God loves you. You cannot enjoy his love if you have a shield, if you have walls all around you. Because those, you know, when you're hurt, one of the things you will do is that you will set up, uh, what is it called, uh, barracks around you to protect your heart. And what happens is that as you protect your heart, you actually keep God out as well. So there's a place God cannot go, meaning you'll never have life and have it abundantly because you don't even allow God inside. Remember, in God's hands, we are safe. He already knows it's there. In God's hands, you're safe and you can allow God to get into those places because then you will be whole. And only when you're whole can you be able to help others and to rise up with others and to be able to pray and to see. And remember when you're whole, you're able to tell when the problem is the other person and not you. Because another thing that happens to people who are hurt is that they don't realize that when someone else is hurting them, it's not them and it's not their fault. So you have all these women in marriages thinking, oh, if I cook better, oh, if I do my hair better, better or if I'm prettier or if I lose some weight or if I'm a better wife but then the person continues to abuse you and the thing is it's because you are hurt and so you don't know how you should be treated so you end up going for somebody who's gonna hurt you because you don't think you deserve any better for the men as well you have men who've gone through rejection gone through things maybe gone through an abusive mother and they go and they marry this woman hoping that she's gonna be the woman who encourages them loves them and all that and she doesn't get that memo unfortunately and what happens is that she starts to abuse you as well starts to call you a windy guy tells you you need to gain us you need to have a spine you know you're so you're so useless you're not man at all and it's very very critical beloved that we watch our tongues people are carrying hurt and sometimes you'll not know sometimes the person who seems the toughest the loudest you know the happiest is the person who's carrying hurt and maybe when they get home they weep they stress and, and you know soon you hear maybe they've committed suicide and you're like how what happened what could have happened you know so it's important to just be a little bit kinder even as we go about whatever it is that we do be kinder and if somebody is mean you don't have to be mean as well so the word of god tells us that if somebody is nasty to you that you heap up coals hot coals on their heads by just loving them and just that a kind word turns away wrath so just be kind be good and and be loving and love back and of course when we make mistakes we say that we are sorry. Don't expect the other person to be the one that does so. Let's go out and love people. Let's go out and pray for people. But then even as we raise up our children, let's be very, very, very careful 
Heart that comes from childhood can go all the way to adulthood. I meet so many men and women completely broken because of childhood things that happened. Don't tell your child off. Don't tell them that they're useless. Don't tell them they'll never make it. Don't call them foolish. And don't lash out at them and tell them they're like their father or they're like their mother and all those things. Love the little children. Even when you feel like you don't have anything, ask God to teach you how to love. And you know, when you have come from abuse, you will find that when you're parenting, it's very easy by the to use the same words that were used against you. I remember growing up, we had neighbors and the lady would call the children all sorts of names you dogs you pigs you idiots you monkeys and i used to get so shocked you know just listening to it but then as we began to try to understand this lady but eventually she ended up in a mental asylum and as we began to check what had happened she had a very very abusive past and her parents had eventually died but she 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 used exactly what they learned and you know by the way when you become a parent that's when you realize the issues that you have you hear yourself using this word and you're like, oh, I can't believe I used the same word that was used against me. So let's ask the Lord to heal us. Let's ask the Lord to change us. And remember, there's no better life coach than the Holy Spirit. Even on the matters of changing generations, he's the best life coach. You can come from a very abusive home, but the Lord teaches you to be the most loving person because of the Holy Spirit and the fact that he's a good coach and your children turn out great and many generations later you have a godly lineage and the enemy did not succeed in destroying the lineage because you said I'm going to be the last one in the line it's not going to happen past me I'm going to keep struggling even though it's painful even though it's a thorn in my flesh Lord it still hurts I still remember I still wonder why they treated me this way I still remember how I was rejected I still remember how I was shamed you know I still remember how they laughed at me. I still remember whatever they did. But the Lord still works things out for us if we let him. We have many adults who, especially on things to do with school, maybe you were laughed at, maybe you had a funny accent, maybe um, you did something silly in school and the whole school laughed at you. And you know, school can be painful because it can be the entire eight years or the entire four years and it's passed on to the next class and everything and they laugh at you. But when they grow up, you find at the reunion, they're really trying to prove I made it. I am this top person. I'm this major person. On the WhatsApp groups, they're talking badly to everybody and behaving badly because they're trying to prove a point. And what happens? Nobody cares anymore. Nobody remembers anymore. And here's the thing, and I shared this with you guys some time back about how I held onto a grudge um, with somebody for a whole six years. And when I finally met them after the six years and I told them, how could you? How could you? And the person turned around and said, I, but I never did that. So to, to, to hold on to a grudge is actually like what Corrie ten Boom said, that to, to, to what is it called? To,